and welcome back. Folks, we're heading back to Lakeish a bit later, but up first, our good friend Danny the Digger Herman takes us on a fascinating tour through biblical history at the Israel Museum. You are about to see the Bible come to life before your very eyes with some of the world's most legendary archaeological discoveries. Danny, take it away. Hi, Eric. After some persuasion, we actually managed to get a permit to film in the most significant display of archaeological find made in the Holy Land, the Israel Museum. I'm in the capital of the state of Israel in Jerusalem. The parliament building, the Knesset, is behind me. And I'm on top of the display of a 2,000-year-old manuscript, the Dead Sea Scrolls. But I want to start in the archaeological wing, where you can see on display items related to the Canaanites, the Philistines, King David. A fundamental question for evaluating the Bible for modern reader with, with science and technology at hand is whether these biblical accounts are valid. Can we find evidence? Can we find architecture from the Iron Age, from the time of the United Monarchy? Can we find evidence of David and Solomon and Ahab and Hezekiah? Well, uh, since the 19th century, various expeditions have been excavating in different sites across the land, but only in the 1990s did we finally find for the first and only time to this day an inscription to mention David. An inscription to mention, to mention David as a founder of a dynasty, a dynasty that is the enemy of some Aramaic king who have conquered the north and placed this inscription. Another sensational discovery that one can see here at the Israel Museum is an artifact that was originally found in a cave like this in a hill overlooking Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Uncovered in the 1980s, it proved to be a burial cave of wealthy Jews. These are the original pots that were found in the burial cave. And around the corner, one can see the jewelry, silver, necklaces, uh, Phoenician glass bits. But one of those items proved to be extremely, extremely important when it was unwrapped in the laboratories of the Israel Museum. A careful look at this, uh, playing with the angles of the light, indicated that there's writing on it. And the writing turns out to be a quote from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord deal kindly and graciously with you. The Lord bestow his favor upon you and grant you peace. This text is said to this day by priests in Jewish synagogues. The Israel Museum also presents a wealth of finds from the Second Temple period, the period of the return of the Jews from Babylonian exile, the rebuild of Jerusalem and its temple, and burials of Jews from that time are on display here. But for a Christian visitor of the Israel Museum, this part presents the three most significant items that relate to Jesus himself. In the center, we have here a plaque originally found in Caesarea in the 1960s that documents the creation of a shrine for Tiberius. The constructor of it is Us Pilatus. The beginning is missing, but it's probably Pontius Pilatus, Pontius Pilate, the governor of Judea the governor of Judea, but also the judge, the person who judged Jesus. And this is to this day the only time his name is found in an inscription. On the left, one can see a bone box that was used for secondary burial in that time frame of Jesus. It's very nicely decorated. It must be of a person of a high class. And indeed, the inscription engraved on the side indicates it's the tomb of Yehosef Bar Kaifa. This is Caiaphas, the high priest, the high priest that interrogated Jesus. And on the right side, one can see another bone box of obviously someone of a lower class. We only know his name, Yehohanan, son of Chagakol. We know nothing about him from any historical document, but the reason it's such an important discovery is because among the bones found inside that bone box, one bone, a heel bone, was found with a nail piercing it. This is evidence of crucifixion. And the only evidence ever found in the whole Roman Empire for crucifixion. 
One of the unique features here at the Israel Museum that relates to the artifacts we saw in the archaeological display, items relating to Jesus, is this model. A 1 to 50 scale model of Jerusalem, a presumed image of the city some 2,000 years ago in the days of Jesus. In the heart of it stood the temple in full glory and millions of Jews coming from all over the world would come here to offer sacrifices in front of the building that in the days of Solomon held the Ark of the Covenant. And yet this sacrificial activity was held by a, a group of priests, Kohanim, that were operating this in a monopolistic and corrupted way. And one of the few people that dared speaking against them was Jesus. Another group that we know about them now, only in modern times, was a group calling itself the Yachad, who decided to replace the sacrificial activity by going to the desert and living a spiritual lifestyle that involves prayers. This group created a library, but eventually they had to hide that library because the Romans were advancing. And that library was left there for 2,000 years until our times. These are the famous Dead Sea Scrolls. Such an amazing discovery that has a special display here at the Israel Museum, the Shrine of the Book. The Dead Sea Scrolls are truly a spectacular discovery, the dream of any archaeologist. The first of them were found by two Bedouins in a natural cavity above the Dead Sea. And in the following decade, in a total of 11 caves, some 16,000 scrolls and thousands of scrolls were uncovered. The study of them, piecing all of the fragments together, was a long process that was really completed just a decade ago. And the exclusive exhibition of the scrolls is in this part of the Israel Museum called the Shrine of the Book. What a unique, timeless, like architectural design. The Shrine of the Book houses a selection of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Here, for instance, one can see a mysterious uh, depiction of a futuristic war between Sons of Light and Sons of Darkness. But you also have your copies of the Old Testament, interpretation on the Old Testament, hymns and prayers that this community created and followed, and the most significant scroll, the community rule, a selection of codes and rules that one must follow if it wants to join these people who call themselves the Yachad. And what's interesting is that these roles are strikingly similar to one figure from the New Testament, John the Baptist. They both resented the temple. They both went to the desert. They both expected the end of days to come soon. The Dead Sea Scrolls with John the Baptist are in a way the cradle of Christianity. Thanks again to Danny the Digger for that amazing tour of the Israel Museum. Up next, we head back to Lachish for my final thoughts on the incredible resilience of Israel and the Jewish people. Only God. Stick around.